Senator Ken Namani is still with us. He's the chairman, Constitution and Electoral Reform Committee. We go now to Lagos to take some questions. Well, Senator, could, could you tell us, I mean, to what extent do you think some of the recommendations that have been made about uh, the elections will curb politicians? Because, I mean, they always want to win. How do you think those recommendations can curb some of those actions of theirs? Even actions regarding winning, the, the fact that somebody is uh, co contesting an election, he, he hopes to win. I, I'm not sure I understand your question clearly. Uh, you Cobbing the action of those aspiring to win, is that what you mean or what? Attitude of politicians. Okay. Well... Uh, the, for instance, we are trying to see if uh, by our recommendations uh, we, we can cut down on the number of uh, months spent uh, in the court premises uh, regarding the issue of uh, pre-election matters that now go on more than two, three, four years. Because it wasn't too long ago that uh, the matter with my former governor uh, Governor Suleiman Chime, uh, the, the matter had been on at the uh, Supreme Court almost two years after he left office, and he was in office for eight years. So if we can have time limit also uh, uh, included in our electoral act for pre-election matters and see how we can quicken even the post-election uh, litigations, as I already indicated, if, if it is possible through the uh, recommendations that will come out of our uh, committee, if we can reduce the propensity of people hoping to win the election just through court process, that will help us a lot so that people can rely and show confidence uh, on our electoral system. Because a situation where people give their mandate and uh, the, 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 the mandate is vitiated by litigations and technicalities. Let the elections be won or lost at the polling booth. You know, Senator, but we're also wondering, um, now your committee is taking pains going across geopolitical zones with this public hearing. But the natural question then is, people have seen the Clement Avery, the most recent ways. What are your thoughts about implementing your recommendations? Part of uh, our terms of reference uh, had to do with uh, our reviewing the previous reports and picking out the aspects of those reports that have not been implemented and fine-tuning those aspects and bringing such forward. Uh, talking about uh, implementation, there's no guarantee that any recommendation can be implemented 100%. We wish reports from people have wrongly said they have not been implemented. It's not quite correct. Some aspects of it have been implemented. We cannot guarantee that our report will be implemented 100% because we don't expect the executive branch or even the, uh, the legislator to be a rubber stamp. There are some ideas that we we'll put forward in, in our recommendation which the executive may deem not appropriate at this time. Or it may end up a National Assembly where they will wait to lay it down or change it. So it's still, you know, our report will, will go through several stages. It's not, it's not a law. It's, it's, it's not even, although we have been asked to come up with a bill which was not included in always the terms of reference. That's a new development. So we will probably will prepare a bill or bills, uh, and some of our aspect of it may go through, some may not go through. I, I think Mr. President has the political will to implement uh, what he may consider to be appropriate, because he has gone through the, the, the vicissitudes of our political system, and luckily for him, he ended up occupying the number one position today in our country. So. We, the, the thing is that we, we should think positive. 
We spend more time in negative thinking, and that does not uh, achieve much. That doesn't help us to, to make progress. Senator Namani, I am concerned about your, your findings and the recommendations that you have made uh, to this point. Uh, if you go back to the UAE's report and its recommendation, there's one particular area where they talked about uh, uh, the Constitution empowers the INEC to register political parties and monitor their operations and their finances and their campaigns. And it has also said that INEC doesn't have the capacity to monitor the political parties and their finances. What is your committee doing to address this particular concern? Uh, I, I, I think you are prejudging the issue. We have not made our, public, uh, our report public. We have not given our position yet. But I can just say a glimpse of it, that yes, we have taken a, a very hard look at that, uh, the, the authorities conferred on uh, uh, INEC the, the, the huge responsibilities uh, also uh, that will go with that authority. We think that it may be necessary uh, to uh, reduce part of the responsibilities to enable INEC concentrate mainly on electoral issues. The issue of uh, party registration, uh, party monitoring, and uh, uh, ensuring that parties even play by their own rule, a thing you may call internal party democracy. Uh, we may be suggesting another way that, that will accomplish that very task. But you know it will not be appropriate for me to divulge what will be the final outcome of our uh, assignment. We, uh, uh, the, the executive set us up we first would like to give the totality of our findings to Mr. President, and then, of course, uh, at that time, you see whether there's a need for another uh, committee of this nature or not. But I can assure you that we are taking that into consideration, because to whom much is given, much is expected. INEC has too much responsibilities, and, of course, the, the, the authority that they have uh, the, the, the outfit has, is such that uh, if we can balance it well, INEC might become more effective and efficient.